What's up, everybody? Okay. I've given this man right about seven months now. I've listened as much as I can. I've read a little bit. And I don't see nothing getting better under this guy. You know the stock market is manipulated, so when they call it a Trump bounce or a Trump economy, things are getting better, blah, blah, blah. Do you really believe it? Come on. Get real. When he was a candidate and they come out with numbers that said unemployment was less than 5%, he said all them numbers were fake and BS and that the unemployment rate was higher. I agreed. Now that he's president, when the numbers come out and they say the unemployment rate is less than 5%, he takes credit for it. What a fantastic job's been done in a short period of time under his leadership. And all these supposed jobs have been created. Well, if those numbers was fake before you got in, and that's what you said, how are they real now? That's not possible, is it? Either the numbers were real before he got in, which that would make them still real now, or he claimed they were fake, weren't real before he got in, and now he claims they're real. So that is a flop. You can't use the same numbers. If it was four point something before you went in, you said that wasn't real. How is it four point now? Four point something now. So we're getting screwed again, folks. You didn't get that wall built with Mexican money, at least not yet, because he forgot to tell you it was going to be our money that built it, and we'll just somehow get it back from them later on. Don't worry, we'll get it back. You got screwed on that. Lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. Well, if I was president, I'd get a special prosecutor and you'd be in jail. That's what he said in the debate. I showed you and told you shortly after that he had nothing but praise for her. He's not going to appoint no special counsel. He's not going to prosecute her, and she ain't going to jail. Any time that he gets back on the Hillary Clinton trip, it's just to keep the flames going with the base. That's all it is. That's old. That's old stuff. And he keeps reaching into the bag and bringing out the old stuff just to keep those people aflame, keep the flame lit, keep them burning bright on that subject of which he's going to do absolutely nothing about. He's not going to do it. You just hide and watch. It won't be done. This seems to me, as it unfolds day to day, this guy can't stay off Twitter. He just can't do it. He's got obsessive compulsive disorder, which will not allow him to give that thing a rest. I mean, even if it was a week in between a tweet. He can't even, he can't do it. He just cannot do it. it. Has nothing to do with don't want to do it. He can't do it. He keeps fanning the flames of the fake news. Well, we all know that the news never gave us the complete truth. Duh. You didn't need him to tell you that, but he fans those flames, and he keeps that anger drawn out of the people about it. That's what he preys upon is the anger of the people, the emotional anger and frustration. Now, the danger is that whenever he tries to swerve you away from any news outlet other than something that he endorses, like Fox and Friends or Sean Hannity or the 
big time YouTuber, the disinformation warrior. He just swerving you to another outlet to where they can tell you whatever they want. He'll tell you it's real and it's good and it's true. Trust me, this is all true. And then you're bottlenecked into these other sources that have been endorsed by him. And you'll disregard any other outlet. And then you're really controlled. Because they got you then. That's like state run media, you know, whenever you're listening to some leader tell you what's what and where to go for what and who, who he gets his stuff from. Don't think this guy is not a globalist. Most products that he makes. Well, all products that he makes, clothes, you know, picture frames or pens, all kinds of crap, are not made here. You know, you can choose a Mexico or Taiwan or I think some India. There's several other countries where his products are made. And he's done been pinpointed on it and asked, and the excuse was, you can't afford to do it here. Wages are too high and benefits are too high. Well, what he's saying is, I can do it here. Yeah, sure. I just wouldn't make as much profit as I want. And I'm all about the money. And I wouldn't make as much if I did it here. How about Ivanka? Yeah, the old daughter. Yeah, sure. Her stuff's foreign made too. Fighting globalists. You gotta be kidding me. Now, this article is from CNN. I just pulled it up because it is about the subject that I'm going into next. About he, he doesn't really care about life. I mean, he may give you lip service, but he doesn't care about it. I mean, whenever he says he'd kill families, you know, just leave out the word terrorist. I mean, you're talking about a family. You're talking about kids and grandparents and nieces and nephews and whoever else. And it's not even terrorists in our own country that would be getting killed. We're in somebody else's country occupying. We're still in Iraq and Afghanistan, for Christ's sake. You get it? We're occupying. We're putting the foot down and staying there and not coming home. And we're not just planting daisies over there. We're still killing. Look at this. Here, I've talked to you before about Venezuela and how crappy it is down there and how then people were starving down there. Now, as bad as it is and as much as you'd like to help them, you gotta be, you gotta be kidding me! That again, we're seeing him talk about using our military to go down into somebody else's country to supposedly help them against this guy who's supposedly trying to become a, a, a dictator. And you know there's going to be death and bloodshed and innocent people getting killed. So again, we see going off of our land into somebody else's land who did not ask us to do this. And again, we see the discussion about Syria in this latest article is that we are preparing a plan to stay there possibly for decades. Again, in somebody else's country that doesn't want us there, we're planning on staying there for decades? You, you, you just have to be kidding me.
And then there's other information out there that he's contacted, uh, uh, what's her name, Blackstone? The private contractor security force? Those are like hiring mercenaries out. Do you realize that if this was going on in our country, that somebody else from a foreign country was doing things in our country that we're doing in theirs? Well, how would you feel? Would you feel all nice and comfy and welcoming while you knew some of your own citizens who maybe you didn't even know, but you knew some was getting killed somehow? Would you be comfortable with that? Is everybody's heart so hard now that they have no compassion and, and love for their brothers and sisters? Because we all are brothers and sisters. Jesus said, love everyone as I have loved you. He's not saying, don't love that one over there. It's okay to kill that one. No, that ain't what he said. He loves them just as much as he loves you or me. Their life is just as valuable to him as mine or yours. He don't like all this killing going on. We're not going to get away with it too much longer. There's going to be some kind of reckoning. You even find articles where, you know, the last couple of weeks, some evangelicals said that God was endorsing him to use force against North Korea. I find these statements like that just absolutely mind-blowing and hard to believe. Of course, he is a big blowhard, but when he says fire, fury, and power like nobody else has ever seen before, you know, who knows whether the guy really means it or not. But the fact that you would take something so small as North Korea and threaten to basically obliterate it, you're, you're, you have no regard for the human life you would be extinguishing by using those kind of uh, weapons that would do that kind of damage he was talking about. So I am worried. And everybody should start thinking about our troops all over the world. You know, we've got bases where we're not raising hell in and killing people. But start thinking about the places that we are raising hell in and still killing people. Why do you think they don't like us? How could someone possibly say we should just go ahead and knock the hell out of North Korea? No regard for anybody that dies. Not everybody over there is a soldier. You'd think they're actually going to pinpoint all the soldiers and those are the only ones that's going to get killed. Get real. So let's hope he doesn't actually go through with anything like this anywhere. Don't you just want the guys just to come home? Don't you just want the other countries to... to stick up for themselves somehow or get some aid from their neighbors and take care of their business on their side of the world where they're at. It's more complicated than that. And I know some of them are little and they can't. But there's ways around and off the edges if you look for it. And you have to you have to ask God, you know, what am I doing wrong? And taking life is wrong. They're not in our country doing nothing. So why are we occupying theirs? It's something to think about.